My name is Brendan Gleeson and I'm a financial advisor for Wilson HDM. I think that you ultimately have to be supportive of the initiative behind um, the financial advice reforms. Um, I think given the environment which we've just come through with the downturn and some of the, some people during that period have suffered significantly uh, and it's natural to have reform and uh, regulation get revisited uh, at that time and uh, if it's going to help us, as I mentioned before, a West Point or a storm, if it's going to help us avoid anything such as that in the future, well, ultimately you've got to be behind that. Um, however, I think that you do have good and bad, uh, whether it be a solicitor or a doctor or a financial planner, um, and the idea behind regulation really needs to be making sure they're weeding out the bad without having a necessary impact on the good, and I think that that's very much the challenge and where it's unclear as to whether or not it's going to be able to be achieved, um, being able to weed out the bad without bleeding into impairing some of the good advisors uh, or professionals in the industry. So, For me, getting into financial planning, I was actually referred to the, uh, the area and the business that I initially started working for by a friend. Um, for me, my passions were I was interested in working with money uh, and working with people and it seemed to be a very good mix of those two. Um, I think initially though I didn't fall in love with financial planning from the very outset. For me it was a bit of a process of I wanted to work in finance so I started exploring other areas of finance while I was in planning. I really tried to look at what kind of activities uh, and what areas that would be suit my strengths and my personality. Um, so I looked into things such as funds management and investment banking, things that had more of an investment focus but I think that after a while for me personally, it became more of not so much where I wanted to work in finance, but how I wanted to be positioned as a financial advisor uh, and what kind of service offering that I wanted to be able to deliver to clients. And that's, I think, one of the big benefits of financial planning is that it is very broad in the sense that you can specialise, you can work in different areas, you can uh, work with different types of clients. And for me, it's been a journey where I've uh, really been developing myself and uh, my experience to get to where I am now um, in terms of delivering the type of advice that I want to and I believe in for clients. And, uh, and that's, yeah, that's been it for me. The buzz for me, I would say, is when you walk away from a client meeting or a client conversation that's gone very well. Uh, you know, it can be either a position where you're able to deliver some kind of a great deal of value or uh, you can see the development of a client or the improvement or you're moving towards their goals. Uh, you know, there's no real, um, I suppose, specific example, but it would be definitely the, the client meetings when things are going well, the, the relationship is building. When you walk away from that, um, you do get a, a bit of a, you know, enlightenment and uh, uh, you do get a charge as compared to other parts of the, the chain of the process. Um, however, sometimes clients can be, you know, on, on, you know, they can be the hard part to deal with as well, but for me, when you're walking away and things are going well, uh, it's definitely a, a good feeling. I think there's always uh, a balance between uh, the work, uh, administration and compliance and client facing duties involved with, involved with the job. Uh, for me I like the client facing aspect of it a lot but it's, for, me, for me personally it's difficult to let go of some of the administration, administrative duties to, to other people who are there for support. So for me personally I think that's a bit of a challenge and something which I'm coming, uh, you know, I'm starting to overcome. Uh, I think in, across the industry another thing which we found actually is a benefit during the downturn was a lot of clients potentially weren't getting a lot of value or uh, communication from their advisors. Uh, who decided to look elsewhere and re-examine re where they were and what other advice was available. Um, that actually produced a benefit for us in the sense we were able to get in front of a few people. However, um, the other issue we're having is that we're, we're getting in front of, uh, able to meet some of those people and able to present our service offering to them. However, given their uh, experience or, you know, negative, well, obviously negative experience with the markets or their previous advisor, the, it is taking a little bit more time to build that trust, to see them come on board and to, uh, uh, and to hold the hand, I suppose, a little bit more in, in getting a full appreciation for what you can offer. Um, but we definitely look at it as being, we're not just looking at making um, a transaction or just put, you know, setting them up and saying goodbye. We look at it as opening up a relationship very much. So we're willing to put that time in and it's just something which we have to deal with. And again, we're dealing with people, these things come up. So it's probably, I think, a bit more of a trend is the lead time for converting a lot of these clients given what they've experienced in the past. That's taking a little bit, little bit longer than what it has. 
I think it would be, I'm definitely in favour of pushing towards having a degree of some discipline which you can use in financial planning. Uh, for me, when I in first started as a financial advisor about nine years ago, it was surprisingly easy to become a financial advisor and I think that is something which is very dangerous uh, for the industry as well as for clients. Uh, and I think that anything which is going to be able to help uh, a person in their advice and uh, deliver value and, and quality to, to clients, definitely in favour of. Uh, it's a very dangerous thing, I think, to put someone in who's very, um, you know, who doesn't have the appropriate skills and doesn't have the appropriate knowledge or experience and have the, let them be in control of such large sums of money. And I think that any client would agree with me on that as well. So uh, anything which I think is going to help push towards a better standard of advice, absolutely. Uh, for me personally, I, I came into the uh, profession with a degree and it was something which helped differentiate me from other advisors. Uh, so I don't think it should be something, um, I suppose, avoided for, for young professionals either. I have read Professional Planner. I'd like to say I read it more often than I do. However, I, I do look at that. Uh, I, do, I do read uh, Professional Planner as well as a few other uh, kind of information sources. And again, I think it's a good uh, resource for us to be able to look at what other people are identifying as issues in the industry. Uh, and what their comments are. Uh, there's obviously a lot of a lot of very um, sound and, 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 and solid advisors who are putting their input and putting their advice out there. Um, so for me, especially when there's something as topical as uh, financial reform, um, you know, trends in the industry, these are all things I think that uh, from that, you know, they generally spur on ideas for creating business and developing a business and improving a business. So it's something which I you know, I definitely use a lot and uh, I rely on a lot as well.